The door is finally in, the hatches are in. Are you ready for the best part? We got a squeaky hinge, but the fit is good. No problem, right? Wrong. I'm so ready to see those windows in their final place. And we have to move forward with this process. Which doesn't really exist. It doesn't exist. <laughs> We don't want it to be stuck to our roof forever. Hey. Hey, Drew. There's the masks. Oh, masks. Goggles. It's gonna be brutal. Second sander, gloves. Oh, it also leaves a shiny. Oh, man. We're back. And we're back. And we still have respirators and goggles because today's first project is sanding the interior of the camper. We're doing something that we don't see a lot of people with these composite boxes do, and that is paint the interior. Almost all of the campers that we've seen, they just leave the white FRP walls, which is understandable because they're waterproof, they're basically already finished, our only problem with them, they're hospital white. It's just not our favorite. Yes, yeah, they're not bad, but we wanna soften it a bit and just make it feel a little more cozy in here. So you can see the blue tape in here. We masked off where cabinets, furniture, anything's gonna be sitting in front of the wall. And so we don't need to paint it. Yeah, there really isn't a lot of surface area left once you've cut in all your windows and your cabinets and everything are in place. There's no need to paint any of that because it would just really be a waste of time. But first we got to sand and that's going to be fun. So we went to Sherwin-Williams and we told them what we were trying to paint. The inside of a camper. Fine, it's FRP. You can just sand it with a really intense sandpaper grit, like 80 grit. I give it a little bit of tooth so that the primer will adhere and then the paint will adhere. No problem, right? Wrong. <laughs> there is always a yeah but. In this build, our shower is next to the entry door in the corner over there. And we want to paint that front wall because the bathroom is also the couch sometimes. It's a complicated scenario that we'll explain down the line. So <laughs> our interior paint is not just a living room, kitchen, bedroom paint. It's also a shower paint. Which doesn't really exist. It doesn't exist. <laughs> That's what we discovered. So we kind of talked to the guy at Sherwin-Williams and he couldn't guarantee seal of approval. This paint will be fine in a shower, go ahead. But he said there's a very good chance that it will work as long as we really sand the FRP and give it a really good dry time in between coats. And he did say it'll have no trouble being in all the other areas of the camper. So we're good for that. It's just the shower. That's the question mark in this. But we're willing to try and now the first step is getting into all of the sanding. Yeah, more sanding and then some priming. So we should get to it because yeah. sanding is not fun. Here's your sander. Yes, awesome. I mean, yes, let's do it. I'm so excited. Oh no. All right, we'll see you later. Then.
day running around trying to find an airless paint sprayer trying to buy one rent one borrow one we couldn't find one and we have to move forward with this process so we decided that we're just going to roll the interior paint on we have our primer here the walls are all sanded we are gonna let this primer dry for 24 hours and then we'll be back tomorrow for two top coats of the color. And then it will feel a lot better in here. Honestly, it's not a lot of space to paint, so it should go pretty quick. It's crazy because when I opened the can of paint, this looked like just a warmer white, but not that dramatic. As soon as you get it on an actually white wall, you can see how much warmer it is. This is gonna make the space feel 100% better. All right, so Savannah did most of the painting, as you can see, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and steal the satisfaction of ripping off the tape, just to ruin her night. No, you're not. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm gonna let Savannah rip off the tape since she did most of the painting. That's so. the best part. <laughs> Are you ready for the best part? There we go, I got it. If you pull it down towards yeah, the... and slow and even. Ooh, that's satisfying. Last episode, you saw us cut all of the holes for the windows and cargo hatches. So now that that's finished and our interior paint is on the wall, it's fully cured, we can now do the final install of the windows. We are also going to put the blind and screen assembly on the inside of the window. We've never had screens on our windows because shuttle buses don't have window screens. It's been many days of cutting the holes, adjusting the windows, painting the walls. I'm so ready to see those windows in their final place. Still thinking about how we met Yeah, I'm with you now
see the best thing in this life for free and that's so true now and there I was with my world falling apart hoping just to get by without knowing it I played it by heart Okay, now we are installing the blind assembly. So in the directions, tells you how to do it, just popping the cover off, putting a few screws in. It says that you can choose the blind on the bottom or the blind on the top. And we think that we're gonna put the blackout blind on the bottom so it pulls upward. Then you can choose to partially pull it up and you have privacy on the bottom of the window but you can still see out or let a little bit of light in. So I think that's what we're gonna go with. You and me, we know that love is in the air Like the wind blowing through your hair summer to end Thinking about the good times that we had but They will never come back again But I'm happy as can be say when I'm with you now through the autumn and the winter snow keep telling all the friends we know that I'm with you now so installing these frame assemblies and the instructions it said you just screw them into the wall now if you have wood or metal it's gonna be a great hold ours is just FRP so we went ahead and tried just into the FRP. It feels really tight right now. And we decided if we feel that it's getting loose over time, we'll go back and put in either like a drywall stud. We could put that in with the adhesive or we could put in another little wood plug like we did to set the doors and the hatches. Right now they look really good and they feel really tight to the wall. So we're gonna go ahead and roll with what we did and see how they hold up. We're interrupting this episode briefly to tell you about a new Patreon exclusive video series that's gonna follow this build. Patreon is our subscription only page and for every episode of the build series, we'll be sitting down to watch and talk about all the different projects going on in the videos. So behind the scenes moments, more in-depth details. There's so much that goes into each one of these projects. There's no way that we could fit it all into one build build episode. So that's why we're starting this commentary series to give you a little bit more detail about what goes into each project. Like welcome to episode two, Drew cut himself immediately. I love that I'm like, let's do it. And then there's like, where'd Drew go? He's not, <laughs> he's not standing at all. It's cold. So we had to make sure we we're in the shop to let the primer dry in the paint. Yep because we couldn't put the windows in until those things were done. This is a Patreon exclusive available to all of our Patreons, $5 and up. Patreon is a wonderful way to support your favorite creators. So we'll see you over on Patreon, but now back to the episode. Finally, all of the prep work is done. We can install the cargo doors and the Arctic turn entry door. So in the last episode, you saw us install wooden plugs into our composite 
foam. So all of that is already finished. We have our mounting points. We use these spacers to set all of the doors in place. And that's what told us the placement of the screws. These spacers just allow enough room for the adhesive. Otherwise you could risk squeezing all of it out of the gap. So a lot of that hard work is already done. All we're gonna do here is sand the composite box as well as this flange here, set it in place, tape it off, and then it'll be time to put the adhesive onto this lip and put it into its final resting place. Important step here is you're gonna probably wanna put some gloves on. You don't wanna get adhesive all over your hands. Tricky part is getting everything set in and not getting adhesive on the gloves and then touching things. Should be a little easier with the hatches since they're small and they're not heavy. The door is tricky. It's, you're trying to hold it, but there's really nowhere to hold it. Um, but yeah, make sure you get your gloves and just be careful to not make a mess. <laughs> yeah, mostly we're gonna try to not make a mess with all of this glue. This is the hard part. Okay. I have it. Okay. Also. Want to try to get the bottom in? Yes. Just a little bit. What's catching? The lock. Yeah, the little bit top go. Nice. Yeah, yeah, good. You got it. good open we got a squeaky hinge but the fit is good So all you have to do after everything is secured in place put the tape around the edges so the adhesive will kind of squish out from the edge of the flange and then you let it set until it's just kind of rubbery, trim it with a knife and it comes off perfectly. It's actually very satisfying. <laughs> The door is finally in, the hatches are in. I'm very relieved, they look awesome. I'm excited. And now we just gotta do the roof vent and that'll wrap up everything for this week. I 
I'm so happy to be done with this part of the project. It's not that it went wrong at any point. It was just stressful. The checking, the measure 25 times, cut once, the whole process of just figuring it out was a little bit stressful because the stakes are high. So to have all of the holes cut, the door, the hatches glued in place, trimmed, done. I can breathe easy. This All is right. the vent fan. Let's do it. Let's get it. How you doing? Pretty good now. Look at that. Sweet. What's up? Hey. Okay, so we need to get power to this vent fan when it's here. Uh, we have some conduit built into the panels at strategic points. This one is just in front of it. It's actually for the lights, but that's why we didn't do an extra one. It's about an inch in front of it, so I can drill in from the side, and I'll hit a channel where then I can pull a wire through. We are back with the butyl tape. <laughs> On the buses, we use this for most of the exterior projects, but for this build, I'm pretty sure just the vent fans need butyl tape. This is gonna go around all of the edges and we are using butyl tape on the flange here. And then on the outside, we're gonna use some lap sealant. We are not going to use adhesive, the Coraper on this vent fan, because if something goes wrong with it and vent fans are kind of known for things going wrong and we need to replace it we don't want it to be stuck to our roof forever <laughs> so we're using non-permanent materials we've had really good luck with these two products in the past we've never had a vent fan leak on us so i think it should be good for this okay you gotta make sure that we put it in the right way so let's just confirm all right that's the back goes towards the back box so goes like this press it You can see here I have this hole routed out that's to let the wire in. There is conduit right here and no issue with that being cut out because we're actually putting a ceiling in. This is fine but we want it to feel like our house so we're going to put cedar plank in again because we like how that feels and looks. So that'll be covered with the cedar plank so not an issue and yeah it's going to look really good. I was holding a couple up in here earlier. Whoo! Starting to feel good.
that's it for episode two. But thinking back on it, we actually got a lot of things done. With all those holes cut, fitted, and everything looking good, that stressful part is over, and the box is now waterproof, so we can work outside safely and put things in here without risk of them getting wet. We'd also like to thank Turn again. This is the final sponsored episode by Turn Overland. They gave us a promo code for 10% off any Turn products, so we'll put that down in the description. If you guys are looking to buy any windows or hatches, you can use that and save a little bit of money. Yeah, huge thank you to them. Obviously, we were familiar with their entry door, but for this project, we really expanded and tested out the other things that they have to offer. So far, we are really, really happy with the cargo doors and the windows but I'm excited to move in here, get all our stuff in, and test them out day to day. Also just really excited to have screens on our windows. So I just can't wait to use these windows and doors day to day and put them to the test. All right, that does it for episode two. We wanna thank all of you so much for watching the series so far. We have a lot of projects planned going forward, so stick around for episode three. Later. Hey. Hey, Drew. How you doing? Pretty good now. How strong is this stuff? Let's find out. I'll get new pull-ups on it. So, oh, that feels great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow.